Hey, what's up? It's Chanel. Welcome to a new episode of Vital Vinyl Vlog. Today's video is brought to you by Curtis Greenwood, heaviest of hails, brother. And finally, we're going to be going over a band that I've been wanting to go over for a long time, but never could get their material. But we're going to be going over the new full length from Fulci Exhumed Information. TV Crimes slash Fulci. And this was released by Time to Kill Records. And is based on the Lucio Fulci film Voices from Beyond, 1991. Now, I'm guessing that TV Crimes, based on the back of the J card, is what we are listening to now as it is the synthesizer part of Fulci. Now, what do I mean by that? Well, the A side is all just brutal, absolutely crushing death metal, as you will hear. While the B side is all instrumental, like, progressive metal rock I don't know what to even consider it aside from it sounds like an Italian horror film soundtrack like it's great it's so on the money and really quickly let's just take a look at the brilliance of a wax paper J card now why is this so cool? It's because you can make your own cover. So just put it in like regular. I haven't seen one of these in a long time, but now you can be a savage and hang this up as a poster if you want. But I like either using the mausoleum as my cover which I think is just cool. I like the way it looks with the moon and everything. Or you can use like the girl getting chased by this ghoul back here. And again, it looks super sick. Like that little cosmetic gimmick. Hell yeah, it's sick. And then again, like, you know, you can flip it this way and have a completely different cover. And so on and so forth. I just think it's, you know, it's very cool. Like, not many bands out there are doing stuff like this. Like here, we can get all the ghouls and make a ghoul cover. And it look, look, they all look sick too. See, it's all, you know, centered and, and stuff. I just think it's super gnarly. And if you want, like, the actual title and stuff, you can do that also. Again, it's all up to you. It's like one of those choose-your-own-adventure books, except for you get the choose-your-own-album cover or hang it up like a poster. But, like I said, I enjoy this yeah i saw the dude i didn't even know this came out like my buddy curtis was like hey can i get your mailing address again i was like yeah he's like i got something to send you and yeah i was super stoked because i've been wanting to go over fulci on the on the channel for a long time and it seems to be though that this is kind of a split as 
I began to notice that this TV crimes individual is separate from Fulci, although everything just says Fulci and whatnot. Uh, like all the tracks that are marked with TV crimes, the, you'll read it in the video description once I post it, because the individual behind TV crimes at the moment wants to keep his identity on the DL, but when seeing the people that like mixed and mastered this, I'm pretty sure I have a good idea of who it is. Yeah, TV crimes and uh, Fulci. So, well, yeah, that, that's the thing. That's not just Fulci. That's a other project called uh, TV crimes. I'm kind of, I'm sore. But I'm holding out. But see right there? TV Crimes X Fulci. And that's all the instrumental stuff. Like on the B side. So when things start off, it just sounds like. And I mean, no offense by this, but it just sounds like a typical crushing slab of death metal. And again, I mean that in the best way possible. But when you get to the B side, I'm very interested to find out who actually is TV Crimes. Although, I'm Proceed pretty sure I know who it is. Taxi. I'm Giorgio Manani. In this hospital, on the 19th of June, 1991. <laughs> I have made a critical abdominal incision down to the intestinal cavity. I am using hemostatic tensors to Six track A side is as crushing as that but when you go to the B side you're in for a treat if you're a fan of like I was saying mostly 70s but I would say more 80s like synth driven 
progressive music. Like, especially if you're a fan of Goblin and, like, films that Goblin have done the soundtrack for, like, you know, Frizzy, the, the pretty much the who's who of Italian horror cinema, you know? And, like, I can even go into, you know, Monte Cone territory, like, with the spaghetti westerns and everything. There's always been this, like, When it comes to films and their music, I mean, you get something as ass-backwards as Cannibal Holocaust, where at times the music does not match up with the footage at all. It's just like, what is going on? Howdy, Captain Caveman. But uh, it's just like, you know, I really loved when I was younger how much... Like, and I'm talking, like, even going, you know, from Spaghetti Westerns to zombie films to cannibal, cannibal exploitation cinema. Italian films always had an emphasis on the soundtrack. It always made you feel something. And when it came to Cannibal Holocaust, it definitely, it definitely was made to feel you, like, make you feel unsettled because at times it's like happy music would be playing and the footage on screen would be just horrifying. But here's the TV crimes. TV crimes slash Fulci side of the full length, which I think is badass. Because I'm guessing TV crimes... Because they won't announce who it is yet, but I'm pretty sure it's one of the individuals that produced this. If I could take a shot in the dark, that's my guess. But listen to how good this is. <laughs> They even actually thank uh, Anino Morricone on the back. Uh, they thank uh, Came uh, Camella Fulci, Enzo Schiote, Giamano Del, Ro De Del Rossi, and uh, Anino Morricone, which I think is awesome. Like, if you've ever seen the film Anthropophagus, like, that's a perfect example of having a ridiculous like soundtrack especially at the beginning with just a very gnarly 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 movie i mean at one point a fetus gets ripped out of a woman and eaten it's gnarly italian gore exploitation yeah i'm a sicko i guess i, I grew up loving that stuff and I always have loved it. I mean, we have some old Fangorias here and stuff. And speaking of Italian horror cinema, there's the Godfather right there, Lucio Fulci's zombie. Uh, yeah, some makeup work from the film. But I would say Fulci is probably one of, you know, alongside, obviously, you know, George A. Romero. Probably one of the most influential uh, 
Italian directors, I'd say. I just want to try and find a picture of uh, Lucio. It says page nine. Ah, oh, that famous scene right there. I always wondered how they shot this, but I guess, uh, you know. But I'm looking for a picture of uh, the man himself, but I cannot find one. Just uh, some of the staff members and stuff, but. Print is important, and I will stand by that for years to come. One day we'll go through all my magazines, zines, all that stuff. Because I have some Fangorias that alone I think would make some cool videos. The Burning, probably one of the most underrated slasher films. Classic gore, first time ever on video, Parasite. For $45 for the VHS back in 1980 something prices. So that's an expensive one. I didn't take this poster out. Check this out though, real quick. I'm sorry I got into some Fangoria, but this is from uh, My Bloody Valentine. Fangoria used to rule. I mean, I'm sure it still does rule, but like, I really used to be a big Fangoria fan. I have uh, the Friday the 13th poster hanging up over there. But when it comes to Fulci and the B-side of Exhumed Information, very interested in finding out who TV Crimes is because he's obviously the synthesizer guy. some heaviness in my life all you got to do is just flip the tape back over or again if you scored a vinyl copy of this hopefully they do a second press because I would love to get this on wax but <laughs> And this album was based on the film Voices from Beyond, directed by Lucio Fulci in 1991. So again, I thought that was cool. You know, most bands, I think they've already kind of used, like, House by the Cemetery to death. But still, I mean, it's a great film, but I, I love the Beyond. To me, the Beyond is the Sio Fulci's, like, magnum opus. That's, like, my favorite film of his. The atmosphere, the soundtrack, the practical effects, at times, you know, are, are kind of funny, just by how over-the-top violent they are, but at the same time, they look great. Like, especially when, uh, that one guy falls and like the spiders are like eating his face. Yeah, like, you know, like the beyond when I first saw it, like just the cinematography alone. 
I just, I, it was just so unsettling the way like just things were framed. And if you're a fan of eyeball gore, you can't go wrong with a Lucio Fulci film. There's gonna be some eyeball gore. Or if eyeball gore grosses you out, then you probably should avoid the mighty Lucio Fulci. And he did a lot more than just, you know, zombie and exploitation and just like, I mean, hell, look at a film like New York Ripper. Hail, like New York Ripper is absolutely like just, a, it's so brutal. And you know, that's the thing I think that's so cool about Fulci, the band Fulci. And one of the reasons I've been trying to go over their music on the channel since I found out about them. Like, I've heard them called the modern day mortician. I mean, I don't know about that. Like, they have their own sounds and their own vibes. But I'm very interested in, like I said, finding out more about this TV crimes individual that is partially a part of the B-side here. As of right now, his name is uh, like a secret and whatnot. It's what it says on, on Bandcamp and everything. I'll post it. But you get 10 tracks here total on Time to Kill Records. Uh, did they do the vinyl version as well? If anyone's watching that ordered the vinyl or CD. But uh, I have to thank again Curtis Greenwood for donating this to the channel. Autopsy, Voices, Nightmare, Evil, Funeral, and Tomb. Make up the B, the A side, and the B side is Glass, Child, Phantasma, and Cemetery. And it's just sick. Like they all have this TV crimes individual lending his hand to things, and it sounds great. it's rare for an album to go from something like that to this. To me, that's what really makes the new Fulci record a legit, essential listen. And this technically came out, I guess, last year. 2021 is the A Time to Kill Records copyright here. So I'm not really sure... Like, does this, is this considered a record from last year? Because if so, I feel like a lot of us missed out on this. I'm guessing it, it dropped late. I, I don't really know, because I am very surprised to have not seen this on anyone else's, like, year-end list. Because this would have definitely been on, like, my year-end list if I would have known about it and had a copy. But it was produced by Super Ando and Fulci recorded, engineered and mixed by Ando at Till Death Recording Studios and mastered by the eternal champion himself, Author, Author Risk. I have a feeling Author might have something to do with TV crimes as right here. 
All music and arrangement and arrangements created by Dome. All synthesizers played by TV Crimes. All lyrics written by Dome and Fiore. And TV Crimes X Fulce. So I don't really know. That's just me kind of just taking a shot in the dark if I was to guess who was behind that. That's who I would go for. It just sounds... Because Alther is so talented. And, you know, he's worked with tons of Dungeon Synth bands. He's worked with tons of black metal artists. Alther knows his shit. And especially when it comes to synthesizers. The dude loves synthesizers. So it just, to me, seems like a perfect fit. And it's a perfect fit for Fulci when it comes to their death metal side of things also. Because, like, as you heard, it's absolutely crushing. And I love it. And just the fact also that out of all of Lucio Fulci's films, they chose Voices from Beyond, 1991. I just think that's cool, because again, you know, they could have easily done The Gates of Hell, aka City of the Living Dead, I'm sure it has like eight other titles. They could have done a lot of Fulci films, but I'm glad they chose, you know, one I haven't personally seen in a while, so I'm kind of stoked now, because I'm like in the mood to check out the film again, because it's been a while, and... It's just a killer slab of death metal on the A-side and Italian progressive weirdness on the B-side. And if it dropped July of last year, not, not the EP version, I know there was an EP that came out last year. I know that for a fact. It was on like Maggot Stomp or something. But the full length, that's the full length date for exhumed information. I don't have my other device with me, so I can't check. But I'll take your word for it. Actually, I do. Duh. Hold on one second. And uh, the distribution is updated, by the way. I know they did, uh, there was an EP, though, also. I just want to make sure... Everything is correct. I just don't want to give you folks the wrong information. Yeah, you're, you are correct. I wonder if this... No, it wasn't. That was uh, opening the gate... Opening the Hell Gates, which was a reissue. I didn't know it was a reissue. So, all right, that fixes my confusion. Yeah, I got confused by, uh, because that came out April and exhumed information July. Yeah, my mistake. So, there's still cassettes available. I mean, they're 12 euros, but sadly, the uh, vinyl is sold out. Uh... And uh, my version of the cassette is sold out also. But uh, once again, okay, TV Crimes X Fulci. Once again, Fulci draws inspiration not only from the death metal genre and greats like early Cannibal Corpse, Obituary, and Bolt Thrower, but the macabre thrills of 80s horror soundtracks as well. Fabio Frizzi, John Carpenter, Goblin, etc. Exhumed information was recorded at Everywhere I Told You, but then mastering was entrusted to Arthur Risk, Pissgrave, Power Trip, Shergolf Agul, Tomb Mold, etc., etc. Eternal Champion. So many amazing bands. The artwork was designed by Solo Mako, Sadist. Elven King and Black Rainbows layout and packaging design by uh, Astromango Studios. 
And for now, the mastermind behind TV crimes wishes to remain anonymous. Anonymous. So, that's the strange part. But everything here is sold out. Like, the vinyl release date is sometime this year. So, damn, even the black is sold out. 350 copies. I mean, hey. Everything they do is great and inventive. This is no deviation. I, I think that person should remain anonymous, but I'm kind of guessing that it's either somebody from Falche or it's the Eternal Champion himself. It's one or the other. It's just, it's so well done. It's one of those things. Like, it's legit. It's so well played. I don't know. It just, I feel like it's something author could have done, but... Who knows? But when it comes to Fulce, again, I don't own any of their other full lengths or anything, but when it comes to exhumed information, this is top shelf. Hands down, I really wish I would have had this last year or even had known they had a full length coming last year. But, oh uh, man, better late than never though. So, heavy, heavy hails and thank you for the donation, Curtis Greenwood. Sick guy. And what's the best nation? A donation. Every dollar helps. So, if anybody has anything to spare, that'd be sick. Otherwise, it's no big deal. But... Again, cassettes are still available. I don't know any stateside distros that have this at the moment. But it's definitely, you know, if you have 10 euros or 12 euros, whatever it was. Hold on, we'll find out real quick. Because <laughs> uh, I'm not sure how much the shipping would be. I guess it depends on where you live. But I don't see a CD release, so there's still a pink version of the album available. But you can't change the cover like the way mine changes. But uh, this is limited to 100 copies, and so is the clear version. That's 100 copies. And my version sold out. The white one. So, yeah, I don't know. I would definitely not sleep on that. If, uh, you know, you have, if you have any spare money, I would highly, highly suggest grabbing this bad boy. Because it's just such a beast. Yeah, this has a completely different poster layout. That's sick. Definitely cool. And uh, ships out in within five days. And Fulci hail from Hell, Michigan. But their prices are in euros. So it's kind of confusing sometimes. But I think you're ordering from a European record. I, I really don't know. and I don't want to send you folks down the wrong way. But just go to their band camp. And I, I would hit them up on Instagram. Or if anybody watching this right now. If you pre-ordered this. Uh, where did it ship from? That's all I really want to want to know. Honestly. Because my buddy sent this to me, and I just don't know where, uh, I think it's Time to Kill Records. Yeah, Time to Kill Records is who put this out, and I don't know if they are a USA-based record label or not, but, uh, 
Yeah, so definitely, you know, I would look that up before just ordering. Just to make sure that, you know, you're not dealing with, like, a record label super far away or anything. I'll, I'll do it for you real quick while I have my phone out. Time to kill records. Sorry about this. I was going to finish, but I want to make sure if you want to get a copy, you ladies and gentlemen are good to go. Because if the band's from Michigan, I would think, you know, that they have, uh... Wait, what? So there's a time to kill records and a time to rap records? What? The heck? <laughs> I hope I'm on the right... Yeah, this is it. What the heck? This is crazy looking. I just want to know where you guys are based out of. <laughs> ah. Jeez. There's no way I missed it. Gee, hold on, I'm sorry. Oh, here we go. Found it. Had to go through a bunch of logos. There we go. Alright, let's check it out. See, it says here they're based out of Italy. So, I really don't know. I mean, it says here they were confirmed for the Las Vegas Death Fest in 2019. Huh. So, yeah, that's kind of confusing. But that's definitely not Michigan. I could tell you that, like, 100% this is not Michigan in this promo photo. So, yeah, I'm guessing they probably are from Italy. I mean, but again, I could absolutely be wrong. Because they're one of those bands, like I said, as much as I enjoy their music, all their stuff always sells out before I get a chance to grab it. But, thanks to Curtis, we have a copy of the new album for the channel. So, thank you for watching. This is top shelf shit right here. Highly, highly recommended. And, yeah, as always, thanks for watching. You fucking rule. Hails. If anybody has any questions, anything, ask now. If you want to donate to the channel, that would be awesome. But uh, I'll just blast a couple seconds and let you folks decide.
question is, did these just ship or something? Because there's no other reason I can think of of why this did not make anyone's year-end list. These had to have been late. That's the only thing I can possibly come up with. Because this is way too good to have not been on a single person's year-end list last year. I mean, digitally, yeah, it might have came out in July, but... Again, I didn't... I didn't pre-order this, so I didn't... I don't know when Curtis got an extra copy of it, or whatever but you know if this did come out when it was supposed to i definitely slept on it and i screwed up because this would have definitely been in at least my top five maybe even like yeah top it, it this is really really good in ways that I really didn't expect. Like, the first thing I heard from these guys was Tropical Sun. And my friend, he was, like, obsessed with getting a copy of that record. And it took him, like, a year. Like, like legit, like, a year to get a copy of it. And he finally did. And uh, I just kind of... It was just one of those bands, every time a new release came out, sold out. Like, ugh. But now you have a chance to go grip this, and I highly, highly suggest doing it. Because, I mean, hell, all those LPs are sold out, I'm sure that's... I'm sure it will get another press, but who knows when. So, there's no CD information available, so looks like you're stuck up Cassettes Creek, if you know. Because I, I like the way it sounds on tape, honestly, but I'm sure it sounds great on vinyl. Because, like, for, for example, I've been listening to the Snent full length a lot but on vinyl, and I was, like, comparing and contrasting, like, the cassette to the LP, and I just really like the way the vinyl version of this sounds, like, it's just, just dialed sounding, so I'm sure, especially with how good of a mastering job author did on this, I'm sure, like, the synthesizers and stuff on the B-side are going to sound fantastic. I can't get over just how, like, just good and interesting it is. That's why I'm, like, kind of flabbergasted that, for one, I didn't even know it existed. I thought they just put out an EP last year. And secondly, that... There's this other artist involved here going by the name TV Crimes that there is no information about who happens to play Amazing Synthesizers. <laughs> I said full cheese exhumed information the a side gives you six tracks of absolutely bone crushing death metal while the b side gives you a nice slab of italian pretty much like horror synth i guess i mean i don't know what else like progressive synthesizer soundtrack music it's great <laughs> 
like, again, you know, if you're a fan of, like, Goblin, uh, you know, just, if you're a fan of Italian horror cinema, you like Fulci, the band, you just don't know it yet. Like, even if you haven't heard them yet, as soon as you actually give this band a little bit of time with your ears and your brain, especially on a release like Tropical Sun, although I'm really digging this ex exhumed information, although this is the only physical release of theirs I own, I really love this album, and just the fact that they had enough, like, balls to uh, make one side of it just straight up some of the heaviest death metal from last year, while the other side is, you know, straight up, like, synth-driven, progressive, awesome soundtrack music, and it's just, it's just great. And why I'm, I'm calling it soundtrack music, because that's what it is. It's, it's like scored for films, like, and that's what, again, is so great about Fulci Sound, like, although it is, you know, based off of a Lucio Fulci film, it's their own take on, like, the musical side of things, and it's just super, super awesome, and, yeah, heaviest of hails to Fulci, Time to Kill Records, and the mysterious individual behind TV crimes who handled the synthesizer stuff on the B-side of things because they just, you know, completely killed it. Making this, like I said, that's definitely the best Fulci album I've personally heard. But, like, I don't own Tropical Sun or anything, but that is a gnarly release right here. Exhumed information. Definitely essential stuff. So, any questions? Anything like that? Just let me know. In five, four, three. Yeah, that's from Wayne's World. But, uh, yeah, Fulci's uh, exhumed information. I would say essential death metal and progressive synthesizer-ness. It's great. It really is. It's great. I, I, don't, I don't have a negative thing to say about this release. Like, legitimately. I, I, I tried really hard, too. Like, there has to be something I really don't like about it. But there's not. It's pretty much exactly what I expected. And even more so. As soon as, like I said, I didn't know that the B-side was going to be pretty much its own original soundtrack. I had no idea. So, yeah. I've been telling people for a long time, like... You know, if you actually know me, I'm a big, big, big sucker for synthesizers. And it's one of the reasons I'm, like, so, like, going gung-ho over the new Blood Incantation record. Because that's the type of music I like, secondly, to death and black metal. And, like, just grind and every... Extreme metal is here. And, like... You know, Tangerine Dream and all that goody, like all that goodness and stuff is like right next to it. And then you have all the other, like like the more minimalist stuff I like and, you know, the more straight up ambient stuff. Which is kind of, you know, on the synth plane, but not as much, I would say. But... I hate when people ask me, 
You ever get sick of just listening to death metal? I'm like, dude, like, that, you're talking to the wrong person. Like, I'm not one of those people that only listens to death metal. Like, I forget who it was. Like, one day I just, uh, I posted that I was listening to Sun Black One. And, like, you would think, you know, I was listening to the first, like, corn record or something. Like, Sorry, like, yeah, I enjoy Sun's music, especially Black One, like, when it comes to nostalgia, for me, Sun's Black One was when one man U.S. black metal, like, was pretty much taking over the underground for a little bit, and I just remember going into the old relapse retail store my friend Jess was working and under her staff picks and what was blasting over the store stereo was Sun Black One and I had never heard anything so just sinister sounding because I walked in when uh I think it was Cry for the Weeper was on but it could have been uh um, Cursed Realm of the Winter Demons. I forget, but I just remember being like, whoa, like this, like this something, like, like just because, like, the vocals and stuff, like, like, you know, because I, I already knew who, like, Malefic was and stuff. I knew who Jeff Whitehead was or Rest and, like, I knew who these people were, so I was like, all right, like, like that's sick and whatnot, and uh, getting to see them live on this tour with Malefic from Zafzer, that was back when, you know, nobody thought he was ever going to play live or anything, so just seeing him perform, you know, without an acoustic guitar and stuff, and Pretty much, that was the closest I got to seeing a Zathser black metal set. I know he did that one Twilight song with Knock Mistium like 18 years ago. But what does this have to do with Fulci? Nothing, I'm getting off topic. But, yeah, this is great stuff. Exhumed information by Fulci. I really apologize for not picking up on this earlier because this would have really changed the landscape of last year's year-end list because like I said the b-side of that is something special and something you don't hear every day and you might not hear again for a, like I mean obviously with the new blood incantation coming it's already starting to starting to happen and I'm stoked like I can't wait for you know metal bands to start finally experimenting again like I get it you know you wanna you want that down tuned death metal that's what everybody wants like uh, I'm sorry that that caveman stuff is slowly dying and all that you know Knuckle-dragging death metal will always exist, but, like, I've noticed a lot of that, like, kind of corny, just, I don't know, there's certain terms I just really don't like, and that's one of them. Like, somebody asked me one time, do you, why, why don't you cover caveman music? And I just... I didn't want to be a jerk and be like, what is caveman music? I knew what he meant, and I was like, dude, like, are, are you serious? Like, you must be new to the channel or something. Like, if it wasn't for a personal issue, like, we'd probably still be getting and going over some maggot stomp stuff. But I honestly, if it's not, you know, gutless... Mortal Wound, I kind of, you know, eh, like, I really wish 
and I've been saying this for a very long time. I really wish the Grave Ascension Sin Never Dies demo was available on vinyl. It was the first Maggot Stomp cassette. These guys became Blood Your Bros, who have a full length out, I think, on Expansion Abyss. But the Sin Never Dies release from 2017 was so good. And the 2015 demo was included. But, like, I still have an old Maggot Stomp uh, poster up there. And, like, it's got the caveman stuff. But it doesn't say caveman shit. It just has the, like, uh, like, the abraded cover, uh, command, mortal wound, malignant altars demo, unearnment. Not the full length, which again, I like that needs a reissue on vinyl. I want this on wax so bad. But I feel like that label has just devolved literally into a bunch of just ex hardcore kids playing death metal. And that scene has exi existed for a very long time. I just always kind of was like, you know, it was one of those things where it kind of rubbed me the wrong way for a long time. Like, just, all right, your hardcore band didn't work out, so you're going to leech off the death metal community. That's not how it is. It's not. That's just like how when I was younger, I used to kind of view it like, all right, these bands already have all these connections and stuff, and... They're, you know, we're busting our asses, like, playing on weeknights and stuff, like, and this band doesn't even have a demo. They're signed and they're opening up for some, like, gnarly band you wanted to open up for. That's when scene politics and music start not being fun, and you start realizing, like, Hey, this kind of sucks. Like, so it's all about who you know. And sadly, yeah, for the most part, it doesn't matter if you have a sick, sick demo. It all depends on where you live. That sick demo could take you all over the place. For example, I hope they're not broken up, but like, I haven't heard anything since Ossuary's. Os first tour. Everyone in Philly was wearing t-shirts of the compilation, which again, that needs a reissue. Like, this is, uh, again, this isn't a maggot stomp version. This is a ruptured fetus productions version. Like, but, like, I would love to have the compilation. But I doubt it will ever get reissued, and I really, because I don't have cremation rites or cremation ritual. Is it rites or ritual? Whatever their first, their other demo is, but I would love to have both of their demos. But I love Supreme Degradation. I'm sure it sounds great on, on Wax. Same with the Malignant Altar demo. I wish I had that on vinyl, but it's not going to get reissued. So, like, why... Why am I even, like, trying to get a copy of something that's not going to happen? But it should, like, 100%. I don't know why it's not. And same goes for, like, dude... People are paying, like, insane amounts of money for this. Like, just reissue it. I, I mean, like, seriously, come on. There's people out there that, like, I, I know would kill for this stuff. And I, I understand. It's hard to get copies of. 
but you know especially with gutless being from Australia and stuff but I'm really hoping for a full length from either one of these bands gutless or mortal wound because they're split with such a banger like especially the mortal wound side of things I just really loved it. No peace in my Shangri-La. That's that song is so good. But I got this off Mortal Wound. Cuz they're sick. But yeah, I you know I just remember when Maggot Stomp reigned supreme. I'm sure they do still to some of you kids, but you know, I haven't even looked at their roster in ages. Which is honestly why I missed this Fulci full length. Because I, I honestly thought it was part of the, uh, the cassette. I, mean, well, I guess I thought it was the EP. And that's what you get for not doing your research. But now I'm glad to know that Exhumed Information by Fulci is top shelf death metal with some top shelf progressive synth driven tunes on the B side. It's great. Get into it. And as always, thanks for watching. Fucking rule. Hails.